Virginia's elections are often seen as reflecting the mood of the entire country. Now, a lot of last night's results were very close, and Democrats will now control two of the Commonwealth's three branches of government. And those results will start to pave the way for the next round of elections in 2024, when voters in all 50 states will go to the polls for primary elections for the U.S. House, the Senate, and the President. So our guest today can give us some great perspective on that and so much more. Democratic Congressman David Trone represents Maryland at the Capitol, and he's also a candidate for U.S. Senate via to replace Maryland's retiring Senator Ben Cardin. That's right. Congressman, thanks so much for taking the time today. Hoping we can start by getting your thoughts on last night's results in Virginia. We'd like to start there and what that might tell you as we move into primary season in just a few short months. Oh, really a big win across the country. Uh, it showed that the voters are very excited about the Democrat proposal of putting people over politics, uh, where folks stand on abortion rights. And it was a resounding uh, blue victory, uh, literally throughout the U.S. Starting, you know, starting actually in Virginia, but you know, going right through to Ohio. I mean, those numbers were just wonderful. Do you think that the results in Virginia have legs that will stretch for Democrats into the the, the early of primary states next year? I tell you, look at the precedents. Uh, every year, Virginia leads, and uh, what happens in Virginia in these. Uh, primaries. That's where the, it goes at the end of the day in the general election. So it's been a fantastic bellwether. I want to talk about your race for a moment, sir. I, I haven't seen any polling for the Democratic primary for Senate here in Maryland. Of course, the pundits are suggesting that Angela also Brooks is the, is the favorite in the race. So I, I wonder if Governor Moore's endorsement of her came as a surprise to you, or did you think he'd wait on the sidelines until after the primary? And do you think that hurts your campaign at all? Well, we certainly uh, thought he might wait on the sidelines. Uh, typically, governors will uh, stay above the fray. But in, in this case, uh, the politicians kind of put politics uh, over people in some respects. And the politicians always support each other. We're a disruptor. Uh, we're a change maker. Uh, we're something different than the establishment is on an ongoing basis. And that's a, a different breed. I think you touched on something important, which is voters say that politicians put politics before people. That really hits a nerve when I heard you say that. And we know this is a competitive political field that you're in. But the reality here is that voters are struggling. They're struggling with things like health care, getting food on the table, inflation. How are you going to help improve their day to day life? Yeah, no, voters across the country are absolutely struggling. And uh, there's all the inflation piece is really, really mitigated. I mean, President Biden has done a wonderful job. It's Inflation's down to maybe 3% right now, uh, but we've got to continue to continue to put people over politics. And the president has done a masterful job uh, of doing that. Uh, yes, we wish he wasn't 82. Uh, we all wish we were a little bit younger, uh, but what it is is what it is. But right now we've got to get the appropriations bills passed. We've got to get the American government open for business. We cannot afford a shutdown. And that's what we're running on the uh, possible precipice of that happening literally on November 17th. Now, we had a lot to talk with Congressman Trone about, and that conversation Simone and I had with him is going to continue tomorrow. We get into the potential of another government shutdown and what it's going to take from Speaker Mike Johnson and Democrats to kind of to try to cobble together an appropriations deal to avoid a government shutdown. And we also talked about funding for Israel and Ukraine. So make sure you check it out tomorrow here on the News at 4.